to not get that all that stuff all mixed up. We're not just talking about bodily fluids here. You know, right. your whole energy gets entwined yeah. with another human being, yeah. and that life purpose and connection to past lives, projection into future, and guilt and shame and and all. Guilt and oh. Shame. oh, guilt and shame are a major core. Let's talk about that really quickly. So, um, the chakras, all the chakras have kind of four common things. One of them is the records. So they actually record all of our experiences. So when we're now talking about the root chakra and we're guilt and shame and all this past experiences, current experiences, past life stuff, um, those chakras record this, they do. So when I'm, I'm working with people in the beginning with their healing, we often go in and see those records and uh, shine some light on them allow them to release, cut the cords, and um, kind of intertwine in, into a, a different kind of experience. Um, they also are storage. Now, the difference between records and storage is storage is something that we do to be dealt with later. So with trauma, you have to be feeling well to deal with trauma. When you're in the midst of trauma, it's very difficult to heal it. You're just in the midst of it. So sometimes our chakras will store something for a later date that we can go back and um, visit. And we see this in a lot of the inner child healings that are needed. You know, something happened to us when we were six, we stored that information there. Um, so it's not necessarily the recording of the effects, it's the storing the entire situation. So as Jenny and I go back as hypnotherapists, we'll go back when you're six, we'll look at this incident, We'll, we'll unwind it, we'll collapse the anchors, and we'll allow you to move through it. And this is all stored in your chakras. Um, it also is regulatory functions of our physical organs. So all seven chakras that we're dealing with are your physical form. When we get into the higher chakras, um, that's an advanced course, we'll get into more of this, the spiritual, but everything that we're doing in this eight weeks will be the physical form. And then the last thing it does is the communicate all our chakras are communicating with everybody at all times of the day. And this is where it's super amazing to have people with healthy chakras in your inner circle. Because <laughs> if we don't, we're not only dealing with our own stuff, we're commun they're communicating their stuff to us uh, all the time, which most of us do not have partners that are doing the same work. We often find that we're the lead, the pioneer, um, so having this awareness that their chakras are communicating with ours at all times is very important. What do you think of all that, Jen? Well, the, the, the main um, aspect of that that science has truly taken on board is entrainment, where they now realise that uh, ladies who work together start to menstruate at the same time. Mm. And entrainment happens on all levels of being when people spend time together. And so you might think that there's a reason why they bring in the big bosses or they bring in somebody to turn around a company, but they're only there for like a couple of months. They want to get the hell out once they've turned it around because they've had to maintain a new energy and convince everybody in that organization that this revamp needs to happen but then they're off to do it on the next one otherwise they get sucked into the um energies of the prevailing um the energies of the people that are already there and the structures that are there and if so if people don't maintain that new zeal and zest even though they'll moan about it you don't like change then um uh, it kind of reverts back this is um the 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 sum of the whole is much more than the parts. Although um, we like to think, and it does happen, that we are one person in isolation and we can make a huge difference to an organization, for example, over time, we will entrain to the prevalent energy that's in there. And so um, that's why it's lovely being self-employed. <laughs> can go from one place to another, um, there was something else that came up as you were talking. Um, oh, that you, you talked about it being the, the base of security, etc. It's also belonging. And I think that's why it's very important that we begin with this, because that sense of belonging now, as I'm talking about places of work, etc., 
lot of people aren't there anymore. And the ones that were complaining relentlessly about their jobs are now lamenting being together with people that used to irritate them because that was the norm, that was the same, that was uh, and they're working from home in a whole new way. That sense of belonging on a global level now is being readdressed. Is that your term? So is that we're readdressing mm -hmm. the sense of being the tribes, etc. Um the it's a different thing when you're excited because the breath will quicken up anyway and I'll be taking shorter breaths. But when people have shallow breaths, they're in their work in the, these offices, etc. I'm talking about, or in shops that you go into, if they're breathing very shallowly, but they're not excited and they're perhaps a bit bored, is that actually a rejection of life? And if you found that, Teresa, when you've got a client, if they're not, it seems really foreign to them when you say take some deep breaths. Yeah, which you know, and I think Jen, when you bring that up, that actually brings up the point of the masks right now. Because people are breathing shallowly and not um, breathing fully when they're they have the mask, but they don't necessarily feel the protection of the mask. So now they've they've stopped breathing the way they're supposed to because they have the mask on. They have this constriction. So if you're wearing a mask, you know that that's protecting you and keep that breath because when you're spending so much time, especially if you have to wear a mask for your job, uh, like Jenny's saying, now you've got the sense of belonging. You're wearing a mask for your job so you're you're attacking kind of many different levels of the root chakra here are having some uh, some challenges um i was just looking at marnie she says what about arthritis osteo and ra is connected to the root as well so i'm i'll i'll get your your scientific opinion on this jen i i think these are the all the lower chakras so as we go through the course, we'll learn that not one does one thing, but sometimes it's many things working together that create some of these challenges. And that's why they're so difficult for people to heal because it's, it's unfortunately not, oh, I see it. That's the part. Let's tweak it. There's like a combination of things going on there. So what do you think, Jen, for those? Health is going a lot more holistic, even at the medical profession. I mean, as you know, I've had some health issues myself and you tend to be referred to one specialist in one area and you absolutely know you know your own body you know it's connected to another area you got to wait till you signed off from that area before you go to the other guys for the other parts of the body and you think actually wouldn't it be somebody that could just see the whole body and see how it's connected please because surely and i i do understand that we we haven't the capacity maybe in our professional work to know everything about all parts of the body, but surely there should be more collaboration rather than rivalry. You know, I knew it was my area. Put it back to respiratory. It was respiratory all along. No, no, it was part of the stomach. Blah 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 okay. blah blah. Yeah. So, when you talked about the the arthritis, etc., yes, the basis is bone. However, think about what we've just said about sense of belonging. The sense of belonging is. Uh, of course very akin to relationships which is the next chakra up so we're not going to get too much into that next week that's for next week but at this moment realize they're all connected but we're having to put a spotlight on each one just like a medical practitioner will be a, an ears nose and throat guy and then you've got your um your orthodontist but you've also got your pediatrician and you've got all these people with specialisms but you do have to have an idea of the whole body and how it's interconnected. But certainly there is a, a big, uh, very definite connection between the first two chakras. You can't really talk in detail about the root without coming up to the sacral, without coming up a little bit further to relationship with our relationship with our body and our relationship then with others as we move up is, um, is of course paramount feeling supported, connected, understood. If any of these things, in fact, could you, could we do a little exercise? Just a tiny one, just a of tiny course. one. To, tiny one. Exercise. So pen and papers at the ready or just have a good memory. Um, think about the answers to these questions. What do I need to do? 
to feel supported. What do I need to do? And the first answer is always the right one. You know, we're dealing with primal stuff here. Root yes. chakra. Primal. Yeah. What do you need to do to feel connected? What do I need to do to feel more understood? In other words, how can I get my needs met mm. more? So you can now see how different it is to our traditional view of self-reliance. Because this is about interdependence, not independence, interdependence. Can you feel supported all on your own? There's only so many things you can do for yourself. There's a point where you need others. Can you feel connected all on your own? You can feel connected between you, layers of yourself, aspects of yourself, but true connection, it does involve somebody else. At the very mm -hmm. least, the earth right and can you feel understood if it's just you talking to yourself and those people that are living on their own at the moment they're really understanding this need to be understood you know because as, as enlightened as we may be we do sometimes need somebody to say oh for goodness sake have we looked at it this way are you, are you really sure about that mm -hmm. we can get kind of wrapped up in our our own isolated thoughts and we need sounding boards even if we're going to uh, tell them they haven't got any idea what uh, what we're going through blah 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 we need to talk and we need to connect well the very the very um art of saying it out loud to another human being often unravels the answer there's magic in the telling yeah yeah that's so important i love it um, oh, um you, you're in for a shock if you've closed down your chakra Take it from one who knows. Um, if you've closed down your chakra, which you'll do to protect yourself, you know, broken relate, all of those things that we've just said, we'll get the answers to in a minute about the support and the connectedness and the, the being understood, etc. When that's kind of swept away for one reason or another, then we can close down that area. I mean, that's even down to the sex, isn't it? You've closed down that area. And women are very good at doing that. I'm going to knock on the door. And um, so I'll hand over to you for a second while I answer. Um, but that, um, that idea of, um, of closing it down when it opens, which may be the next step for some of you guys like me, it might be unpleasant. Yes. Over to you. I'm coming yeah. back in a let, let's use the word uncomfortable. It may be uncomfortable. Um, and the same way that Jenny's saying that if you um, closed it down, it's usually when we didn't feel supported, when we didn't feel understood, when we didn't feel that we were connected. And it does often occur when we've uh, ended a breakup or a relationship, or also when somebody very close to us has passed. This is definitely a level that gets affected when grief is involved. And it's something that can um, stay unwell until it is addressed. So if somebody passed away 15 years ago and you didn't address it, it can still stay unwell. There's still pieces of this that could stay unwell. And the thing about the chakras to know is that there's varying degrees of health in them. They're not completely out or completely in. Um, they, there'll be degrees of, of wellness. Um, sometimes we feel really supported and grounded and connected. And then other times we feel like nobody gets us. And often when we come into this um, feeling of not being understood, I think this, this is most prevalent in the people I work with, that nobody understands me. I just feel like I'm all alone. I, have, I don't have anybody that gets me right now. And this is a big piece of us being ungrounded right now, unrooted. Uh, even if we are working together, we're not connecting on the same level. We have these masks in front of us. We have this paranoia. We're not hugging each other. We're not, um, we're not free to be connected and understood as we were in the past. So 
this is a, a big area to look at today and kind of awareness. So see different pieces, how it's affecting your life. And uh, everybody kind of changed. I think I missed, I lost somebody. Um, and as she, as Jenny is still um, leaving, I'd like you to actually answer these questions. How do you need to be supported? Think about that. Because that in itself is going to reveal really what you need for your healing here. You see, I see some, some tough faces here. This is a hard question. It's, it's hard to even look at. Oh, my God. If I need to be supported, I need people. First of all, let's talk about that. What do you mean I need people? <laughs> that in itself has ego standing up going, no, no, I can do it all on my own. I don't need anybody. Uh, this is honestly one that I definitely dealt with. Again, I explained where I came from in the challenges, zero to six. Um, often felt to need somebody was weakness. And that created um, disconnect in relationships. It's a, yeah, I think even to this day, it's a challenge to be able to need and trust others. It's layers, right? Being able to trust people, creating those roots. And also, what do you need to feel connected? A misconnection that often people are feeling right now is connection with self too. We're not just con not connected to others. We're not really connecting to ourselves. And we're, remember, we're talking about the physical form, but there's the physical, the mental, and the spiritual ways. All of these are connected into the, the chakras. And then the last one is, what do I need to be understood? How many of you actually understand yourselves? <laughs> right? <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I feel this one. I think... Once I understand myself, I change too. I'm like, oh shit, and now I'm different. So it's it's a never ending process. It's something that we get to work on all the time. Coming from this beautiful understanding and uh, attitude of we get to, we get to discover these things, we get to heal, we get to unlock, um, and not that we have to. Perfect. Um, now, we've got all of this and we understand how it all affects us, but there's also man-made things that are affecting us as well right now. And one of them is an electric magnetic spectrum. There is a lot of this 5G talk going on out there, guys. When you go like this, you can feel all these things in the air that are also affecting us. <laughs> And we don't need to be paranoid about it, but we do need to be aware, right? And I like what Jenny was saying about the salt baths. The simplest sitting in the clearing and the cleansing is going to help you with those lower, lower chakras. If you don't have a bath though, you can also use salt scrubs. Those are also very effective. A salt scrub is something you can, you can just even put a little bit of salt in a body wash and um, you do your own salt scrubs. I have a salt bath nightly. Ah, oh, you're brilliant, Terry. Excellent. You probably feel pretty grounded and rooted most days. <laughs> it does work. This stuff works. Uh, any of the girls that are on here with essential oils, if you um, want to do a foot bath too. So remembering that's all those lower things. So it's all the way down to our feet too. You could plunk your feet in a salt bath. What do you think, Jen? Ylang Ylang and rosemary, uh, sandalwood, cedar, all the earthy stuff. Yes. Oops. Anything from a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lang lang is brilliant. And actually I've been using it all week for a uh, sacral. So that, that lower as well. It also helps with sexy time. Sexy times. <laughs> so different kind of things that we can use in our life to assist us. The universe has given us all kinds of tools. Um, I also wanted to talk about, let me pull up some stuff. How about food while you get your notes? Yeah. Food. Do you remember your mom saying, or your primary carer or whoever, 
uh, had impact on you as you're growing up. If you got really upset or whatever, you'll make yourself ill. And then straight away, they'll present you with some food that you absolutely didn't want to eat because your stomach was all churned up and whatever. Remember um, you, when you used to gripe for baby and give them gripe water and stuff? Yeah. Well, food is grounding. Because what does it do? It travels down the center of you, gets through the 22 feet of intestines and down into the bowel, and then hopefully gets excreted. So food is very grounding. But if you can eat root vegetables or anything of the ground, you no know, um, fresh, natural, raw sort of food, that's going to, we'll talk about light later as well, but certainly stuff that grows or grains and earthy stuff will ground you. And that's quite often, I want to mention this because sometimes people are, are drawn to food in a very compelling way. Um, I've dealt a lot with food issues and with um, weight management, but particularly um, uh, weight eating disorders, shall we say, to give it that global thing. And what I've realized is, you know, if it's fresh, healthy food and you're hungry, bloody well eat it, excuse me, because it's very grounding. Forget about the calories, think about the energy of it. And also um, the, the assimilation of taking the energy out of the food, it's a very grounding process, if you like. It's very, very um, entrenched, whatever you put into your body. And so do not chastise yourself for grabbing something, even if it doesn't seem particularly healthy when you're upset, yeah. because you probably need the sugars, you probably need the boost, and I'd rather somebody be mentally and emotionally stable than worrying about the, the size of their belly. You right. know, it seems so superficial when you put it that way. When Teresa and I deal with some big issues in people which are a real disturbance of their um, emotional well being, and if they're worried about their weight at the same time, get things in perspective, you know, get your um, emotional and uh, mental well being sorted first and then you know when everything else is balanced then you want to go jogging okay off you go right. yeah. but also i think that brings up the comfort eating jen when our <laughs> roots are out is when we do that comfort eating and knowing that we need the comfort eating too that's okay honoring it it's when we add the guilt and the shame and the oh i shouldn't be doing it that we really create more of a, a challenge in there that's necessary and um, in general, protein, um, anything like that is brute. Anytime we do healing work, I say eat grounding food. Make sure you guys eat grounding food. Drink lots of water, eat grounding food, because that's going to help you anchor all of those good emotions. So yes, we do it when we're not feeling good, but eating when we're feeling great is also a wonderful way to anchor in positive feelings as well. And good, good food. Americans even call it ground beef over there, don't they? Americans, yes. not... Yeah. Like an age, but we call it minced beef and you call it ground beef. Ah, interesting. Very, very cool. Um, so we're hitting almost the uh, one hour mark. We're halfway. So if everybody, anybody wants to get up and grab a snack, uh, take a stretch, give yourself a minute to absorb all this beautiful information that we've gotten so far, uh, we're just going to take a three minute break. If y'all can. Wendy? Can they share their answers and we can do something about those or, um, or rather not? Up to you. You're the boss. I don't think we have time to share everyone's. Okay. Um, perhaps if anybody wants to um, type in a, a one answer. Uh, so whether it's how do you feel connected, where, how do you feel supported or how do you feel understood? That'd be awesome. And then we can highlight that. Uh, if we put everybody on speaker, we're going to run out of time. Too much issue. to talk about. <laughs> like global issues, you know, right right now, I think it's kind of, dare I say, meant to be in our involvement. I know people talk about ascension and getting all into the, the head and spiritual stuff, but our connection to the earth and the disturbances that were happening in the earth. Jen, I'm going to pause you because everybody's peeing. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Go pee. Everybody be like, but, 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 but I want to go be. <laughs> you, you set them up to a good pee. <laughs> Just closing the curtain. It's really dark here. 
<laughs> okay. So far, so good. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for all that have shared. We'll talk about it when everybody gets back. We just need two more. Okay, Jenny, you've got lots of sharing going on here. Oh, good, good, good. This is also your physical comforts, by the way, guys. Like right mm. now, I'm chilly. I need to go turn on something, or I need a blanket, or, you know, it's your physical comforts there. Also, uh, if people in accidents, hmm? so this might not just. Um, within the body people who aren't connected to their root chakra well in uh bang their knees or stub their toes and actually have accidents it's Lumpy. as if yeah now trying to bring us back to remember you've got a body you've got yeah. a body yeah and if you move home a lot if you move home more than usual if you have trouble putting down roots right I had that for the longest time. I would always go sleep at my mom's couch when I was sick. I didn't uh -huh. really feel home anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's a good to, um, to start bringing some, some of our experiences because some of this stuff is um, very well earned, shall we say? 
because of experience. You read it in the book to start with and then you think, oh, I'm living it now, am I? Yes. I'm living it. Oh, okay then. <laughs> Um, so mm -hmm. let's talk about this really quick. So Shannon says to feel supported, she needs physical touch. That's why she needs hugging people. I totally hear you. I miss hugging people so much. It feels so weird when they're done and I like, I can't hug you. <laughs> um, Terry needs to open up more to others to feel supported. Awesome. And also how explains how you can control that, right? So when you open up, they'll open up and you open up, they'll open up. Uh, Shannon says physical or mine says yes physical touch for me it's supposed to tribe a group of friends or like-minded who we can share and we haven't had this in a long time which is why my online academy has been developed everybody needs the tribe guys we're all craving it yearning for it and we need it for the development of self and last is, I agree, Shannon, we're allowed to hugging, hugging. So everybody's about hugging, hey? <laughs> so you know my way of hugging yourself. You can do your hand hug, but also, I don't suppose we've got Lisa Black on here, have we? Have we got Lisa no. Black? No. Um, if you take your arms, cross them over like this. So you've got your arms, palms facing each other like this. Interlace the fingers. And then bring the arms through and just give yourself a lovely hug. Because you know what this does? It also crosses over the energies. It's a really nice way of doing it. You know, they've done tests and I wish there was a way of me testing you, but you can, you can test yourself by attempting to do something that you'd normally find um, you need a lot of strength for. And I, I thought about taking the lid off a jar or something. But if you've got something where you realise, oh, that takes a lot of effort. If you can devise a way, and I think it'd be different for everybody, or picking up a heavy weight that normally is, oh, quite a, a strain for you. When your chakras are balanced, it's whew, so easy. And when they're out of balance, it's tough. And the other thing is, when you look at a cross, you look in the center of a cross if your energies aren't crossing over properly and you look at the center of a cross that will make you weak because your focus is coming to a center point and you can test this by looking at parallel lines if you look at parallel lines and you're strong you're separated your uh there's a technical word for it forgive me kind of uh, like cross lateral but that's not the right word um you want your energies to be crossed over so you get the flow through all of the chakras and intertwined these things as you've said Teresa, don't exist in isolation everything feeds the other chakras and it's perhaps so very important because it's the one that all the others kind of drain into to earth oneself if you think about it this way that you are your root chakra pulls up the energy from the earth but pushes down energy into the earth too in that way it's a kind of gateway between your physical self and um all the other stuff right everything and, and when we talk about that i think that's what's easier for women to release than men because we menstrual every month but men don't really have that that actual physical release. Oh, they have their own physical release, Teresa. They do. Yeah, that's really true. Do. <laughs> okay, another another topic for another time. Uh, so just to get some clear on some things, I want to get get like some kind of structure to this. So we talked yeah. about the location of it. It's in the genital areas. We know it goes down both our legs into uh, the ground. Second, we talked about the color red. So the color red is important because it's kind of like a shortcut what we can do. So we can drink out of red things. We can look at red, red colors. Um, we can eat red foods. We can work with red crystals or the, the darker ones as well. Also, I wanna talk about um, adrenals. So your root chakra is actually affected by your adrenals. So if anybody um, is aware of this, Jen, is this something that you've worked with already? That's how you go 
out of control, if you like, because it's the parasympathetic system. So when they when that's overactivated, when you've got all this um, cortisol and adrenaline flowing about your system, and it's not being grounded, you're like a live wire. Some people get addicted to that though, and they like it. Because if there's a problem in your root chakra, you'll know it because you'll feel lost, disconnected to the earth itself and other earthlings. You'll feel unsafe, alone in a grand scale, distrust, unmotivated, depleted, depressed, at best, aggressive. Because this is the primal um, and the way to kind of connect with it, um, I'm going to bring the practical bit in, the sound that you do, you think of Darth Vader, so you, you let your breath out, and then in through the back of the throat, you want that real deep, earthy, guttural, primal noise, that of um, the caveman, um, because if you're feeling unsafe, alone, unmotivated, depleted, depressed, distrust, disc, you'll certainly connect with others if you start making those noises. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, images. So this is um, a snake or dragon or holy fire, as some people, um, and they, the yin component, is how we're able to receive material assistance and keep our will to live alive. So if you find people that just don't want to be here anymore, your root chakra is out. Hopelessness is your root chakra is out. We haven't talked about the money either, have we? The no, kind of no. Material. Yeah. But let's talk about the money, Jen. Well, money's a funny thing, isn't it? Because when it was chickens and um, bison and whatever, and we all swapped them with each other, it seemed to have more meaning because it was something that we valued for something else that we valued more or equal as an exchange when we bartered. As soon as it got turned into actual coins, you know why they started to... <laughs> I know you love the history. To I do. <laughs> No, they started, they, they stopped uh, coins being actually silver and gold mm -hmm. because clever people would clip around each one and take the clippings and smelt them to make more gold, etc. And they were very heavy and cumbersome to carry around, you know, big um, bag of gold thrust on the table there. So quite soon we started to have things that represented value. And then we ended up with bits of paper in checkbooks or even on our pound notes, it would say, I promise to pay the bearer on behalf of the coin of the realm. It was a promise. It wasn't even valuable anymore. You know, if you um, went to another country, you couldn't spend it because it was of your realm, of your king. And another thing, Malkuth, is it, it's, we say earth, but it's actually the kingdom. If we elevate the status of this chakra, this um, root chakra, Malkuth, is the kingdom of earth and coin of the realm, if you like, has now changed the coin of your earth, what you value. Um, as you know, when I talked about living on the island, I had a, an orange tree and I had so many oranges, no one person could ever eat all these oranges. So you'd freely give them, want them to be given to others because you don't want to see them rotting on the ground. And somebody else who's got a lemon tree, they want to give you their lemons. You know, so that you don't then think, well, these oranges cost so much in Tesco's or whatever supermarket you've got there. I have an abundance of this and I really want to give it to you because I don't want it to waste. I know that you'd like some oranges and please have the oranges with love. And they would say, oh, I happen to have a load of these things. Would you like? And so that's kind of a more uh, normal way of exchanging goods and services. And somebody helps you out, you naturally want to help them out. 
and it's not always give and take you know that this idea of receiving is rooted in that um root chakra the if your root chakra is blocked you feel very um unwilling to receive There's, it's all about receiving um and um certainly with goods and services it manifests then as uh, financial problems if it's blocked yes it's financial. yeah yeah and all of us have a degree of blockage in this way even some of us who are experiencing um abundance in our life we could still experience more abundance right so it's all a varying degree of that we're going to do a bit of a, a healing in about 15 minutes i think jen if if um if anybody's struggling with that and at one point i was um if anybody's struggling with the idea of receiving on the basis of how i've explained it i hope you realize in order to to learn to receive again it's a good idea to start giving it's like giving something that you have in abundance that doesn't make you feel depleted or bitter or um uh regret giving it you have something everybody has something of abundance i've got words you can't shut me up you know i've got um everybody's got their thing they might not value it because it bec it's so natural to them right. but you give your stuff and then you'll find stuff coming back as long as you can learn to receive it. So there's a little bit of like what, how this gets blocked is you give to the wrong people or you uh, forget or don't understand that it's actually a bigger circle. So even though I may give a to all of you today and yes, you gave me money, but maybe you couldn't have given me money. Um, I would receive it in a bigger way maybe in reviews or um, you would you would tell somebody else or you'd go out and share your light and now you've shared the message and you know and then that person has something else and so it's like it's so it, we shut it down because often we're givers and we're not getting enough back we don't have clear boundaries so we've shut this down because we give 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 and we have nothing left so we have to remember first of all to give to ourselves as well so even though we give to others, we must give to ourselves first. And also understand that the law of give and receive is actually a way bigger, bigger piece of the pie than we realize. You um, know, when I leave in order to answer the door, yeah, it was a neighbor whose friend's son had a big problem with, because of lockdown, et cetera, because um, one thing or another, uh, I turned into an alcoholic and so that he wanted to see me one-to-one -one and I said even though it's a neighbor I will only see on zoom and I did it with love because I really didn't want him to suffer anymore and then my reward if you like is he his dad's friend has just knocked on the door to say just how grateful they are and they really want to do something for me and uh, but that is just such a genuine thank you thank you so much for doing this yeah. and out of the blue somebody knocks on the door and just says that's just so wonderful do you realize what you've done you know you've done this and that outpouring of energy that's like oh i'd like to bask in that just for a little bit thank you very much it's nice to know that it is appreciated and i think that's all part of the abundance thing isn't it um Teresa, that that idea that you, even if you don't think you have much to give you do and you know when you're doing it right because you'll get it back either energetically or, or materially and it just feels good yeah yeah and you're right it, even if you don't feel like you have anything to give at this point there's always a smile consideration compassion a listening ear you know we so many of us have come here with these beautiful natural abilities to to give um also i wanted to talk about what you're speaking with the eating gen simply to keep your root your root balance you just need to eat three balanced meals a day with plenty of water vitamins and exercise your root needs to be shook up baby if we're always sitting on it it's not getting what it needs it's getting stuck <laughs> so even if you just wiggle yourself to the bathroom you're good right it doesn't have to be go out and run 10k like i think tracy did this morning um but 
you can simply get up and shake it. All of these chakras, they like when you move them, get them moving, get everything kind of going. So your first step, if you want abundance and you want to receive, get your butt moving, get it going. You're literally your butt, get your butt moving. Um, some of the problems that arrive that you may not catch, uh, if you have people that have addictions, that's usually the root chakras are out. Or if you are addicted to things, and it could be food, sex, gambling, wine, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna play with that. Um, the money issues, also your basic needs. If you are having a hard time with your basic needs, and that could be anything from filling your cupboards to finding the people to love and support you, um, do some work on your route and you'll notice as things start to change. So as you become conscious and aware, the route is all about awareness. We got to look at that awareness. Um, then you'll start to see the changes happen in your life. Jen, you look like you want to add there again. Well, this, um, we talked about the colors of the chakra, but there's also the, um, the density, the patterning, the texture and the sound, this, so much more than just a colour. If you like, it's it's a vibrationary field that happens to kind of radiate or be displayed to us as a colour, and um, how we hurt others. Now, this has been a big thing, and um, there's something going on here. There's something going on here because uh, of this happening today. I don't know if you've had anything, uh, Teresa, or if you're just practically perfect exactly as you are. But I've had much root stuff coming up the past couple of days. And it was pointed out to me that, you know, we use this idea that it, you've got to fit your own oxygen mask first before you can help others. But it's been pointed out to me how it hurts others particularly somebody that loves you, if you're not taking care of your, or even acknowledging your own needs, your physical, your primitive, your instinctive needs, if you're not acting on your instincts, if you're not doing that primal stuff, your own comfort and needs, embracing and integrating those needs and acknowledging to others, actually, I need to do this now, uh, voicing your needs, and choosing to acknowledge them and um, understanding fear rather than condemning it realizing that you, you've got a bit of fear coming up and rather than condemning that you shouldn't be in fear fear is primal and instinctive and there to keep you safe um, it's a uh, sensation and smell and touch and sounds and connection to earth it's all that stuff if you don't feel safe and you ignore that and then somebody else will pick up on having to keep you safe and it puts a lot of pressure on them that oh jenny's not looking after herself so therefore i've got to take that on board and i've got to remind her to look after herself i'd have to remind somebody else to look after themselves where you just at some point maybe think oh for goodness sake couldn't you just do it for yourself because it's a big burden on those that love you when you don't do it because it then kind of as we talked about the trees you brought trees in at the beginning and the roots of the trees go and um give energy to other failing plants they and we are just like that as you said about um trees before and giving and uh receiving we are all interconnected and particularly when you've got a good bond with somebody um there may be part of us that relies upon them reminding us to take care of ourselves when in actual fact it is um something primal and instinctive that we need to do for us you can talk romantically all you like about having somebody meeting your needs and isn't it lovely to have a hug off somebody else etc but it, it's got to start with you and I think we do tend to, some of us perhaps on occasion, think that it's selfish to put your own needs first. But when you don't, you hurt others. That is my big point over the past couple of days. Does that make sense to folks? That makes so much sense, Jenny. And thank you for being so honest and, and raw about that, because you're right. People often feel it's selfish to take care of themselves first. But 
by not taking care of yourself first, you are uh, activating others to do it. Like you said, that love and care for you. And we, um, we think that we're to give um, unselfishly like this is the best, but to actually take care of ourselves is the best for them too, because it also gives them permission to take care of themselves. When we take care of us, they can take care of them. And then we have that beautiful, um, healthy relationships that we create. Roots come up for me too, because I, I connected with my mom yesterday for the first time in three years. This, yeah, we went out physically. We physically went out to visit. Um, and definitely those roots and that primal emotions, I guess. <laughs> Do we need to do some primal screaming? <laughs> no, no, it, it was good. But I did a lot of healing before and a lot of healing after taking care of myself to make sure I was centered, balanced, grounded, and very aware of where my energy started and her began. So super important. And when you get this strong basis, guys, everything becomes manageable, right? having a little pep talk with myself on the way there. Like you can do this. You can do this. You are Teresa Collins. You can freaking do this. <laughs> and coming in with that beautiful grounding what, uh, made it a wonderful meeting. I'm so glad that you shared that, Teresa. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me, it really does. Because uh, sometimes, you know, sharing some of these things when others um, are perhaps thinking that we're perfect, we're learning all the time. <laughs> We're learning all the time, aren't we? You know, getting deeper into these things. Yeah. And uh, you think you've got something sorted, everything's moving, changing and evolving. Suddenly it comes up again. Oh, you're dealing with root chakra, are you? There yeah. you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all your core beliefs are in your root chakra. All that core stuff that we come with. And when you have a, a limiting belief that's sitting in your core, that's going to be in your root chakra. So again, knowledge is power. Thank you, sweetie. Um, I love all the love and outpouring, guys. I really support. Honestly, without your support, I probably would have been like a babbling idiot in the corner. So <laughs> that's where we need each other, where we need to be understood, connected, and supported. Uh, gave me the strength to do that. Um, the family values and beliefs and heritage and original feelings about ourselves come here. So those original feelings that were developed between zero to six months that often are the core challenge in our life. We're like, why the hell can't we heal this? Why can't I get rid of this? Why am I still dealing with, still dealing with this nonsense? Um, that comes in your root. So if you have this healing that keeps coming up and up and up, and damn it, why can't I get to it? That's where your root chakra is. So remembering um, coming into that story space. When we move into the next level, guys, I am developing something called ORC an orc field practitioner so i will teach people to go in and pull this shit out of the roots <laughs> at the root <laughs> at the root of a problem how many times have we heard that go to the root of a problem guess what root chakra guys there's a reason why this came up sign you up for that money you bet i i think everybody will be in that um jen what else do we want to talk about? We're running out of time here, so I want to make sure I get everything in here that I can. I think it's um, it's wise to mention inner child. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the you know naught to seven is where certain things get rooted within our psyche and last for a lifetime. And so inner child meditation, um, certainly uh, security and stability is all rooted there if the inner child feels unloved even though you might be showered with love around you as i kind of alluded a moment ago um it it dishonors others that actually love you if you don't love yourself and i know that's a big thing so accepting <sighs> one's and accepting one's fears knowing that it's a primal instinctive thing for you to feel safe, whether that's about money or property or being accepted by others, et cetera. Um, that's why I'm saying it's not independence, the uh, root chakra, it's interdependence. And when you've lived through this stuff, I mean, not just now at this level, 
but all through your life at those points where um, you don't have that trust and love in yourself and you're searching for it on the outside, it's probably an inner child thing. It's probably um, way back when, where you had your childhood wound and um, even just buying yourself an ice cream, you know, that's, um, that's helping your inner child. And, and I'm in. <laughs> There's your homework, everybody. Go buy yourself an ice cream and look yes. like a kid. <laughs> um, I know we've talked about a lot of like the challenges. I know I said it's not a huge healing thing. We're going to do a healing in a minute, but I do also have a bit of a mantra you guys can write down that'll help start um, activating this root chakra into a healthy way. And when you're all ready, I will say, so um, you simply say, I am safe and grounded. The feeling I am safe and grounded. I feel protected in this world. All is well in my world. I deserve to be safe at all times. I am supported by Mother Earth. I have everything I need. I trust in the good of this world. I release all my doubts and fears. I am supported by those around me. And I choose to trust the universe to guide me. Great thing about those is if anybody's got the negative ego coming and arguing with any of them, it's even more relevant for you to say them. I like it, yes. You know what I was saying about the um, the timing that the root chakra is the chakra that's based in time. So yes, it, it does have the past to assist it and the future because its priority is to keep you safe. So it bases safety on what's known before. So if, for example, it's learned to be frightened of a spider it's still frightened of a spider now and it will be frightened of a spider in the future if that's not addressed in the now so um just think about it this way this chakra is very now and very earth so you could be on some wonderful seminar all very highbrow and all very spiritual and if you're somebody that's frightened of a spider and a spider crawls up your leg you'll be rooted in the now very quickly <laughs> by your <laughs> it'll it's very now it's very <laughs> you yeah. you could mal etc regardless of what your other chakras are saying or regardless about what you think how you think you want to behave it's primal it's instinctive <laughs> it's um fear based yeah. and that can be a good thing understanding your primal fears and looking after your own needs yeah and it's also what we resort to when we're feeling unwell 
we come back to those natural habits. That's what's so important to address these beliefs in these cores, right? When we're when we're off and we're we're sick and we're not feeling good, next thing you know, we're just acting like this wounded inner child and we don't even understand. But I'm a grown up. <laughs> we can't end without talking about the tarot cards. What do okay, you think? Let's talk the tarot cards. I think it's the world. I think it's completion. I think it's um, major arcana. I feel that it's world in the in Malkuth the world, the earth, the summation of everything. And so that's to give it more gravitas because it isn't just a base chakra. Perhaps one of spiritual folks don't want to engage with that much. It's so important because it's completion. It's where we end, if you like, and where we dig down into the ground. So I think world. Well, so that's the traditional tarot. Let's do a, a card. I have Ooh. Soul's Journey. Let's see, seeing as she talked about cards. So we're going to do Soul's Journey. Um, and we'll see what they want us to relate to this, this chakra. Because it's really, all of us, all these chakras are created in, in our soul as much as they're physical. And they want us to focus on today is the courage. Finding the inner strength to face fear with confidence. And there's that beautiful red color there. Aha. And that is, it is courage. What we talked about with fear, understanding fear rather than condemning it. Courage. You don't need courage if there's no fear, do you? Courage is something you utilize in the face of fear. Yeah. And then we're talking about opposites, right? So we find, yes, this is what we're dealing with, but what's the opposite? Yes, we have fear, but we can have that courage. Yes, we have fear, but we can have that awareness. Yes, we have fear, but we have the ability to conquer and release and get back to the roots of it. I love it. And by the way, so now we're just piling on the things, the tarot cards and the sounds, etc. If you're listening to a piece of music and it vibrates, right down to your bowels and um, i'm told hip-hop and rap music earthy music of the street is that kind of an energy to activate the root chakra really earthy down to earth beats yeah the drum i hear the drum i feel that bass drum boom 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 i love it okay guys we're gonna do a quick healing uh we're gonna keep it short and sweet uh, but if anybody wants to grab a drink grab a blanket if you're chilly get yourself so super comfortable oh i had a new thing to add by the way yes. uh, organizational uh, skills and timing being on time be and that's what i thought oh Teresa's really good at that or oh, get that diary out organize things yeah yeah so, which okay. is funny because in my personal life i am so not on time but on my 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 teachings and stuff i like to keep people on, on task uh, i personally don't love when somebody tells me it's going to take two hours and we're three hours in and and i've got something planned so i like to respect and honor and value everyone's time that's joined me today thank you for that compliment jen <laughs> consistent <laughs> All that good stuff about um, honoring time. Again, it's time based, honoring time, being on time, uh, simplifying complicated things, bringing them down to earth. You've got to come back down to earth. Oh, yeah. Okay, in the real world, how do we do that? What, you know, it's all about that. I've got a whole new respect for the root chakra since I've reinvigorated my knowledge over the past few days. I love it. I love it. And that just, again, highlights how wonderful it is to teach because every time we do, we learn, we expand. And learning something is one thing, but share with others, guys. Share what you've learned here, please. Uh, feel free to share, share the message, share the light, because every time you tell somebody else about it, it gets rooted in you even more, even stronger. And that's, that's my goal. That's my jam, baby. Okay, Jenny, you're going to... Start us off. Or are you gonna? What are you gonna do here? How are we gonna do this? This is all. This is all on the fly, guys. Inspired. Core. Let's say core intention is money and value and worthiness. I'd like to do um, perhaps the analogy of the tree with the roots going down. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just point to me when you want me to join. Ooh. 
Okay. See, lovely, lovely. Okay, get yourself into a comfortable position, whether you're lying down or sitting up. And do that wiggle and scrooching, you know, that movement to get yourself, truly get you, yourself into a place of comfort and ease. As we are gathered in comfort, that's what to gather means. Together we gather in comfort and ease. And as you recognize now that you are meeting a primal need, in being comfortable, you can allow the soft, gentle heaviness of your own body to give in to gravity. On the chair or bed that you are on at the moment, become part of it. Allow it to be more rooted in the ground. Give in to gravity. Allow all the muscles to switch off and just let go. Let go now. With each descending number, you'll get very pleasantly heavy. Realizing that the heavier your physical self gets, the lighter another aspect of you gets. You are of the heavens and earth, and you meet somewhere in between, balancing those energies. So as you give in a little bit more with each out breath, each, each easy breath in and every gentle breath out, you're going down, down deeper, down deeper. <clears throat> I'm going to count from seven to one. By the time I reach the number one, I'd like you to imagine in your way, however vivid, however vague, the day you are planted in the earth with roots that will be reaching down, down for sustenance, for stability, for balance and for union with other roots. Though there are seven steps. So let us begin. With the first step of seven going down. And six. Down a little deeper. <clears throat> down a little deeper. More and more relaxed. Five. Beginning to feel more alive. Still as you may be, your essence, as you work with essence, your essence goes down from your root chakra now, opening it up, all the other chakras help in opening the root chakra because they want to go down into the earth with you. So, Five and four, twice as deep as before, and three, as you listen to me, three, and two, nearly there now on two, one. as if somewhere in your being you can hear a tribal drum on one, the vibration of the earth calling your name. As you do now, put down your roots, extending through the dark, stable, nurturing earth twisting and turning, finding your way, spreading out to give you the stability and the union with all other aspects of earth, seen and yet unseen, traveling 
whilst seemingly physically doing nothing at all, the essence of you travelling through the bowels of the earth, searching for connection, stability, sustenance, balance. All of your needs being met, being supported, connected, understood, understanding, being, just being, travelling through the dark and finding the light. Having all of your needs met now. Continuing. Deeper and deeper. Knowing that there is the physical part of you that came from the earth. Ashes to ashes, yes. And the cells of the body will return to the earth at some point. You have a union, a deal with the earth. All of the elements of earth, yes, though, down into the bowels. Right down to the magnetic molten core. Everything supports you, nurtures you, honours you for being here at this time in physical form. Time to make the most of it. Allowing the lining, feel the warmth, feel the comfort, Feel the nourishment as your soul intertwines. Hear the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Ba-boom. 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 Feel your heart beat, beat in unison. <clears throat> Mother Earth blesses you and surrounds you, invites you, allowing you allowing you to become part of her today as you so deeply root, so deeply enjoy with ease, comfort, and light. Feel it, fill your entire being, the vibration, the vibration of earth, with true support, feeling your mother, of love, of light, feeling her warmth and her heartbeat. As as you do, you simply step in, allowing her to embrace you, to nourish. And in this form, you find your deep value as we release all lack all unworthiness, simply give it to her and feel her fill you up. Feel her love as you understand you are worthy, you are love, and you are earth. This beautiful element now becoming part of your very being. As your root chakra ignites, initiates, and activates. From this moment forward, easily aligning, easily able to balance. Simply needing to just feel the heartbeat. Feel your heartbeat. Of Mother Earth. And in this place of molten lava and being and creation, the very core of who you are, 
knowing you need to simply breathe, breathe in her essence. Feel her love, feel her support. And as you do, feel yourself traveling, traveling up, up through all the layers, easily taking through all the needs, all the nourishment, all the love, all the joy, all of her support. Feel yourself coming, coming back to earth. Feel yourself on the earth, of the earth. As you come back into your human form, Allowing, aligning with ease. And long after this journey is done, you will remember this feeling of grounding, of support, of love, of worthiness. As you breathe, breathe in the pure essence and this beautiful healing we have experienced today. And as you seal it, bringing back this beautiful red core that will now become part of your being and easily able to access it simply by looking at the color red from now on. Simply by seeing the color red, all of your being will come rushing back to this amazing space in time. And as you glance it, even in your the side view, you will feel so rooted, so grounded from this moment on. And you realize amidst it all, the earth is there to serve you. And there is a part of you that wishes to serve the earth, giving and receiving an intrinsic part of you. And as it feeds and nurtures and replenishes you right from the base of you, as if it is sucked through to the top of your head, all that wonderful nurturing comfort and ease. Yes, this is where your ease is easy now. Life was meant to be far easier than maybe we think it currently is. The earth is easy. You are easy. Like an easy afternoon nap. Everything is easier than before. It's easy to have your basic needs met. It's easy to bend in the wind instead of breaking. It's easy to ask and feel the support that is there. And it's easy to support others as long as it does not deplete what you have for your own needs. And in that way, you naturally and easily connect more, understanding more. How can you get your needs met? With ease, with comfort, and sharing the comfort that you have access to right now as you know that the color red will remind you of how rooted you can be not only in space though in time now making the most of this time now Time for ease, time for sharing, time for comfort, time for needs met, basic, primal, earth needs, movement, physical strength, nurturing, I hug 
a hug now from Mother Earth. As you come up, further and further now, back into the body, feeling revitalized, feeling a buzz of energy throughout your entire being, buzzing with life, overflowing with the abundance of Earth and what it can give and does give and will forever give to you. On my count now, coming back to full conscious awareness with all the fruits of the earth at your disposal, with one rising up like a beautiful bubble to the surface of the sea, two feeling balanced and perfect, perfect and balanced, balanced in every way, three coming up further now, calmly confident, completely relaxed, four, these good feelings stay with you now and forever and five open your eyes stretch and smile grounded and happy and free now excellent well oh. done miss jenny so fun to to play with you darling well done <laughs> what a team hey yeah like excellent that was, you like? that was really, really nice. How's everybody? Did everybody enjoy it? Um, if everybody wants to unmute their mic in the last five minutes, we can share uh, what's going on. How was, how was today's class for everyone? Loved it. Amazing. It was good. It was good? It was really good. Like it was, it. Yeah. Really good. Lots of stuff I already, I, I knew, but adding on to it. So I have like a fuller idea of the whole picture excellent um play with the idea of seeing this red too and see how much uh better you feel now as you play with red uh yes and please do your mantra i am safe and grounded i feel protected in this world all is well in my world i deserve to be safe at all times i am supported by mother earth i have everything i need I trust in the good of the world. I release all my doubts and fears. I'm supported by those around me and I choose to trust the universe to guide me. This will start activating, aligning, allowing this beautiful root chakra to behave the way it should and watch all the magic unfold. I love it. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Jenny, for all of your amazing help. As always, it's incredible. I'm very grateful to be here and thank you for your thanks. That means a lot to me. I really do appreciate the opportunity of being here and being with all you wonderful people because I know on some level now we are all connected. We're all connected. Yeah, and that's I a great point. Get some plants. Yes. Get some plants. And connect, guys. You, uh, We have a beautiful tribe here. Feel free to connect with each jeans. other on a, on a different basis here. Um, everybody, please make sure you send me your email and I will figure out how to send you the recording. And um, yeah, next week we're going to do the sacral chakra. So that's orange. So if you want to find something orange, wear something orange, um, anything to do with orange, uh, support, dye your hair orange. Come on, Marnie. <laughs> my hair's already red. I don't know if you can see it really well. Yeah, I oh, see yeah. red. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I got it colored uh, on Friday because it was starting to look a little shabby. I needed a root touch up. So Looks I good. went with aerial red. It's very, very it's lovely. Very good. Did you get my shoes? Um, Teresa, if you could maybe start a uh, Facebook Messenger group what? with all of us in it. I know Marnie asked us, but you're the one that can kind of connects all of us to begin with. So, right. Is that a possibility or? It is. Uh, okay. My hesitation is I have you all in so many groups already. That's true. Right? Um, so yeah, we'll we'll start a Facebook group though. <laughs> we'll do it. Why not? Hell yeah. Uh, I heard you, Marnie. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, Terry, new tarot cards. I look forward to uh, playing with them on Wednesday. 
I'm looking forward. I've got to sleep with them first. <laughs> yes, excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. If something comes up, um, let me know because some, you know, we shake stuff up. You might have questions. So feel free to access Jenny or I at any time and we will do that group. Um, keep it to uh, chakra group stuff, though. Hmm? Yeah. I think what they were saying is um, a messenger group rather than a Facebook group, just a, a collection of yeah, messages. Sorry, messenger. Yeah, I just wanted like a Facebook, like we have for the psychic development class, we have a Facebook, Facebook development chat. So I'm yeah. just wondering if we could have that for this group so that we can all connect because we're not all friends together on Facebook and I would love to, you know, talk to everybody and stay connected. Absolutely. And I do have um, Chelsea who couldn't join us today, but she'll be here next week. Um, so I will make that happen. Thank you. Oh, Thank make that happen. Ta -da. Um, and I will send you guys and you can share your email there too, if you'd like, that'd be good. I have no idea where my phone is. Uh, okay, cool guys. So next, next week again, 10 o'clock, if for some reason you can't make it, no worries. We'll be sending out the, um, recordings and also just send me any questions that you have following the group after it. And if there's something specific that you have questions on, you want Jenny and I to talk about, please let us know because we can prepare for anything. Right. Yeah. Right, thank Jenny? you, ladies. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Homework, homework, homework. Yeah, you know, oh, you fuck. Whoops. <laughs> How about you did? Do they have homework? Homework is to discover bounty, what you have in abundance that perhaps you didn't realize or appreciate, and what you can share with us guys. Well, I'm sure we've all got an abundance of something, yeah. some quality. And we can help each other discover what that is. Yeah. And so, I have an abundance of laundry right now, too, if anybody wants to help with that. Oh, me too. Oh. Laundry? Did you say laundry? I have a, I have a shitload of laundry as well. Hey, yes, we are so abundant. <laughs> it's laundry day. Okay. I love you all. Thank you so much, guys. We will see you next week. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jen. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.